let's go to john chapter 12 from verse 20 we're going to read john chapter 12 verse 20 and we're going to go all the way to 31 you if you can please be upstanding for the reading of the word um, i'm going to be standing for much longer than you so you can stand with me for a few minutes um, hallelujah hallelujah please be here this afternoon it begins at four o'clock uh, we're going to raise up a, a sacrifice of worship not just for the end of this year that but that will carry us into the next year i need you to understand and i'm going to set the foundation for where i feel god is taking us we're going to read john chapter 12 and verse 20 and i'm going to go all the way to verse 21 the bible reads from verse 20 i'm reading from the new new king james version it says now there were certain greeks among those who came to worship at the feast then they came to philip who was from bethsaida of galilee and asked him sir <clears throat> sir we wish to see jesus uh, philip came and told andrew and in turn andrew and philip told jesus but jesus answered them saying the hour has come that the son of man should be glorified i almost thought that was mmd there the hour no all right verse 24 most assuredly i say to you unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies it remains alone but if it dies it produces much fruit can i just dwell on that scripture this scripture liberated me uh, some things must die for you to grow not everything that dies is bad matter of fact not all death is from the enemy i feel like preaching right there in fact do you know that death was not the enemy's idea you see we give the devil too much credit if death was the enemy's idea then we would we would not be glorified even in death you see something's got to die but i'm going somewhere with this I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going somewhere with this. And that doesn't mean that you should die early and that shall not be your portion in Jesus' name. The Bible says, verse 25, it says, He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor verse 27 now my soul is troubled and what shall i say father save me from this hour but for this purpose i came to this hour verse 28 father glorify your name it says then a voice came from heaven saying i have both glorified it and i will glorify it again verse 29 reads therefore the people who stood by and heard it and said said that it had thundered others said an angel has spoken to him jesus answered this voice did not come because of me but for your sake verse 31 it says now now is the judgment of this world now the ruler of this world will be cast out verse 32 it says i want us to read verse 32 together can we read it together is it on the screen okay verse 32 reads and i if i am lifted up from the earth will draw all peoples to myself may the lord bless the reading of his word let us pray father we just want to thank you we want to glorify you for this time lord i ask that you use me as a vessel a vessel of clay but it, we have this treasure in earthen vessels Lord, I ask for your spirit and for the unction to minister the word of God that releases liberty, healing, change, next levels to your people. Be glorified and magnified in our midst. It is in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And everyone said a believing, Amen. 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 Today, my subject title, as we teach, preach, is called Ex-Altar. 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 But you can say exalter okay so i want you to look at your neighbor and tell them neighbor i don't know about you but i'm an exalter you may be seated in the presence of the most high go amen you can park there for now i'll come and get you a bit later now let me start off by saying that 
even in the divine, in fact, throughout life, connection is important. Somebody say connection. Everything to be sustained or born on this earth requires some form of connection. Um, it's important that we understand that we are all connected. There are some things that you can only receive in life through connection. There are some things which you'll only be able to see through connection. There's some things that you'll only be able to download through connection. So connection is important. I'm not talking about connections, but I want you to know that in one way or another, you need a connection. In one way or another in life, you will need a connection. Uh, and likewise, we need to understand that everything can only survive or things can survive in the right environment. In fact, when God created the heavens and the earth, he created everything through a connection. Uh, the animals that are from the land can only be inhabited on the land. The animals that are from the sea can only be in the sea. If they're removed from their element, they will die. Okay? Likewise, we are created from God. You must realize that whatever God created, he created it for an environment. He created it to be sustained in that environment. When it is disconnected from that environment, it begins to die. Are we together? So let's look at it this way. If you take fish from the water and place it on land, what happens to them? They die, right? If you place animals in water, what happens to them? They die because they were created from an environment and the only way for them to be sustained is when, within that environment. Somebody say connection. You're not blessing me. Say connection. You guys are sounding like you're still hungry. Somebody say connection. Amen, amen. We're not fasting. It's coming up next month. So please speak like you have a bit of energy. And you speak like that next month. For everything to be sustained, it requires a connection. Likewise, this television, everything that is plugged in here that is amplified is connected. Somebody say connected. And when God made us, the Bible says that he breathed into man. He spoke to himself and breathed into man. So man is connected to God through the very breath that he breathed into us. And therefore, if man is connected to God, it means that the only way for man to survive is to be in an environment where God is. Are we together? The only way for man to survive is to be in an environment where God is. And my Bible tells me that God inhabits what? The praises of his people. So wherever there is praise, wherever there is worship, God is there too. I'm going somewhere with this. This is why it is important that we recognize the importance of worship. Worship is our connection. Worship is our connection to God. When we praise God, we remain connected to him. When we worship God, we remain connected to him. It is the environment through which man survives. It's the environment through which man grows. Why is worship important? Because worship expresses love for God. Worship expresses our affinity and desire for God. And my Bible tells me that faith works through love so love is the conduit through which faith works so anything spiritual does not work by routine it does not work by principle it works through love okay some of you are looking at me funny that's why the bible says that even if i give or have charity and have not love i've done nothing Mm, mm, mm. you're not hearing me even if i prophesy and i make noise but i lack love this love that it's talking about is not love for your brother it's the god kind of love tell your neighbor you've got to love you're not blessing me look at them one more time tell them you've got to love Listen, too many believers try to, to, to make routines out of the spiritual the spiritual is not based on routine it's based on relationship the spiritual is not based on routine, it's based on relationship. How do I know this? It, it, that's how when Elisha was testing the prophets of Baal, they said the same things. But what caused the fire of God to fall was the relationship that Elijah had. The rest were speaking words. Elijah had relationship. Could it be, beloved, this morning, as we are worshiping, some people were looking at everything else, but others were looking for a relationship. Could it be, beloved, that while others were singing all kinds of words, somebody was connecting to God? I came to let you know that the reason we come here and we worship on a Sunday morning is to connect to God. Somebody say, be connected. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say, be connected. Be connected. 
for everything to be sustained in our lives, we have to remain in an environment where there is worship. We have to remain in an environment where we are connected to God. So what happens is this, beloved, as we are talking about heart for the city, it means that God's connection must still be here. If God sustains us in, the, in his presence, it means that when we carry his presence, we must be connected to others around us. Are we together? Beloved, let me tell you something. When you are connected to God, it will show. When you are connected to God, you don't need to fight for some things. When you are connected to God, it will show. God will make ways where there seems to be no ways. God will break through for you without even saying certain things. God will reveal himself because of a connection. God will show you things that you have not even asked for because of your connection. God will show his power in ways you cannot define because of his connection. The Bible says that he appeared to Abraham and said, Shall I keep this secret from Abraham who is my friend God said because of my connection I can't keep secrets from you when you are connected to God you have insight that you don't even ask for this is why when we come here we don't come here for religion we don't come here for games we don't come here for routine we come here for relationship we come here to seek the face of God and to be connected. When you are connected to God, beloved, it will show. And I want you to hear me as we pray for this city that the world is looking for a real relationship with God. But there are people who have never seen God. And the only way they can see God is through you. So I Paul said, imitate me. People have taken that as a doctrine to say you must follow. No, no, no. Paul was talking to people who did not know God. So he was saying that as I follow God, as I show you the example of God, this is the way that you should follow God. When you're connected to God, it will show. Tell your neighbor, get connected. Come on, say it again. Say, get connected. Let me tell you a story. There was a time, a friend of mine, um, there's a famous musician uh, from... South Africa. He came, he came to visit Zambia. He's very, very famous. You know, he likes filling up stadiums, that guy. You know? Some of you know him. You may Jesus deliver you. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing. But he likes filling up these stadiums. He's very, very famous. Now, 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 I had a friend, right? So I found out some months later, or some months ago, rather a year ago, that one of my friends, a very, very old friend of mine, was his manager. Okay? A very, very old friend of mine was his manager. I mean, we were in high school together. We were very close friends when we were growing up. And so I see my friend on Facebook, and he's like, checked in to Lusaka, Zambia. I'm here, and I'm like, ah, dude, you're in the country. Where are you? Let me come see you. He tells me, I'm by the hotel. Now, I didn't tell anybody I was going to see this guy, because I didn't want people to say, oh, pastor's gone to see the celebrity, you know what I mean? I wanted to see my friend, right? Now, what happened was the first time I went to see him, I didn't find him. So I said, dude, I can't find you. And I said, sorry, I was downstairs. Come back. I'm in the, the dining hall area. You can come talk to me there. So I come to see him, and I'm coming to greet him at the dining table. I'm coming to see him. By, by virtue of seeing him, I ended up meeting the celebrity. I didn't go there for the celebrity. I went there for my friend. But because of my connection, I ended up seeing, you guys are not feeling me this morning. You're not feeling me. You're not feeling me. Could it be, beloved, that when you come to a place, you think people are looking for you, but they're seeing the God? Could it be that, 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 that your faith is the only connection people have to spirituality? Could it, be, could it be that the way you connect to other people, don't isolate yourself. Engage this world. This is the only way we can change this world, by bringing the faith to them. The Bible says, how can they hear unless somebody preaches to them? Could it be that when people meet you, they end up meeting, oh man, 
They end up meeting God because of you. I pray may that be your story. May people meet you and meet God. May people meet you and see God. May people meet you and meet their breakthrough, meet their destiny, meet their change, meet their next level. I came to let you know, even in this year, you will meet people that will show you dimensions of God. You will meet people that will show you dimensions of breakthrough that you have never seen before, simply by their connection. I prophesied to two or three of you in this place. I didn't come to preach to everybody, but I came to preach to a few people who are believing God that although it's December, my year is not over. Although it's December, my year has not come to an end. Lord, make me meet somebody that makes me meet you. That should be our prayer, beloved. That when people meet us, they meet God. When people meet us, they meet divinity. When people meet us, they meet breakthrough. When people meet us, they don't meet condemnation. They meet change. They meet transformation. Why is this important? We, we have to know that we as a church are nothing in ourselves. We are only something because of our connection. Ah, oh, come on, man. You guys don't want to preach. We are only something because of who we are connected to. That guy was just a guy I knew. But because of connection, oh man, because of connection, I got to see someone that I was not looking for. I pray in the remainder of this year, may people meet you and meet their blessing. Amen. Why is this important? We have to know that all we are here for is to show people Christ. There are people who laugh at you in the office for being Christian. But let me tell you something. When they have a problem, they'll text you and say, pray for me. Okay. Okay. They've told you pain day. No, they, they won't say pain day when there's a drama. They won't say that. They say, can you pray for me? Please put me in your prayers. I have learned not to be ashamed of my faith. That's why the Bible says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God. It is the power. When people meet you, it should meet power. Amen. Somebody say connection. connection. We must lead people to God. The first thing I want you to know is this. The transparency of the church will transform the community. This is important. When we reveal that, listen, I am simply an earthen vessel, earthen vessel, and there's a treasure that God has deposited in me. It's not me that you came to see. It is God. It is God. This is a message that must be clear, that we are here to point people to God. People must come to you and want to see the God in you, the God that you are connected to, the God that you hang with. It is the role of the church not to be God, but to reveal God. We're here to reveal God, to reveal God. And we only get to see the true God when we are a worshiping church. Because we, we reveal ourselves, we're intimate before God, and God shows himself through us. Beloved, let me tell you something. Our lives must be transparent before the people that we live before. Our lives must be transparent. But when they see through you, they must not see emptiness. They must see God in you. The Bible says that two men from Greece came to look for God, came to look for Jesus. And they came to, to Philip. And they said, we want to see Jesus. We want to see the God that you serve. We want to see the guy that you are connected to. What's interesting, beloved, about worship is that sometimes God appears, but there are some times when God must be found. <laughs> there are some times where God is not in the place that you found him the last time. There are some times that where the great God, who is everywhere omniscient, seems to withdraw and be hidden. In some situations there are some times where God is so big but still yet seems so uh, small because you cannot see him or you cannot locate him uh, and there are times where God says not only will I appear but there are times where you must come look for me 
You must come look for me. And the one thing I found is that, is that there's great joy in finding what you're looking for. And I want to let you know that, that, that seeking God is more than a position. Seeking God is a desire for his presence. Okay? Now, 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 what that means is that there are some people who can be around God, but there are some people who are not with God. You didn't get that. Some people were where Jesus was, but the Bible says that they were worshiping for a feast. That means some people came for the feast, some people came for God. Can I bring you here? There are some people who are here, and you could have a serious problem, but you're looking for a solution, but we have not recognized that the real solution is not the problem being answered. The real solution is meeting Jesus. I don't care who you are. Whatever problem you have will not give you permanent satisfaction if it's alleviated. The only satisfaction that is guaranteed is when we meet Jesus, when we are connected to him, when we see him for his glory, when we see him in his majesty, when we see him for everything that he is, we see and find true joy when we are connected in him. When we see the big picture, it brings clarity. And beloved, let me tell you something. Whatever happens today, I hope that you're not looking at what people are wearing. I hope you're not looking at what's going on around you. I hope that your eyes are fixed on God. For the Bible clearly says that looking unto God, not looking unto people, but looking unto God who is what? The author and the perfecter of our May our eyes be fixed on God. In every situation that we enter, may we find God. Because seeking God is not in the position. It's not coming to church. It's being in Christ. You can be in church and be far from Christ. Because too many people are looking for somebody close to God. But they don't realize that after the man that's close to God, you must ask to see God yourself. Thank God for the man of God. Thank God for the woman of God. Thank God for T.D. Jakes. Thank God for whoever you are listening to on social media. Whoever's podcast that you're listening to. Let me tell you something. Their sermons are not good enough. You yourself must find God. You yourself must have a relationship with God. You yourself must be connected to God. You yourself must desire to know God. And not just know people who know God. There was a time when I was growing up where I thought that just being born in a Christian family meant I was Christian. There was a time where I was, uh, when Facebook came out and Facebook said, what's your religion? I was like, well, I'm not Buddhist. I'm not Islamic. Therefore, I must be. It doesn't work like that, beloved. Christianity is not a matter of eliminating options. Christianity is where you realize that you only have one option, that you need God. In every aspect of your life, you need God. That you don't just seek God when things are bad, but you seek God when things are good. Because you realize that there is no true good without God. That good is not enough without God. You can have all the money in the world. That's why the Bible says, what good does it profit for a man? What does it profit a man to gain the whole world, yet lose what? His soul. Because wherever you are, you must know God. You must be able to see God in your life. Whatever thing you're going through, you must be able to seek God. At work, seek God. At home, seek God. In your business, seek God. In your relationship, seek God. In everything that you do, seek God. Tell your neighbor, seek God. You're not blessing me. Tell your neighbor, seek God. Ah, okay, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, listen. I need, I need a breakthrough. So you need to say it properly. Uh, now, now tell them, neighbor, neighbor. you need to seek God. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Listen, listen, listen. Some of you are, for those of you who are already in 2019, God bless you. But as for some of us who know that God still has something for me in 2018, it's not over yet. It's not over for me yet. Why are you are celebrating Christmas? I'm waiting for Christmas. Me, I'm waiting for Christ. And if it means waiting till the midnight hour, we're waiting for him. God promised me things this year and they must come to pass. 
God promised me some things and they need to prevail. God did not give me some blessings for 2019. He ordered them for 2018. And I'm going to believe for them until they come. Is there anybody who else who's believing here? To say, God, I don't care what the delay is. I'm still looking for you. I don't care what the date is. I'm still looking for you. I don't care how much time they said I have lost. I'm still looking for you. Seek God. For those of you who were born in the internet generation, God bless you. But when we grew up, we grew up with certain games. For us, games were things like books. I remember at one stage in my life, my sister and I used to play a game. And the game was named the Capital Cities. That, that was our game. Those are the games. We used to look at the map and say, name the Capital Cities. And because of those games, I literally know almost every Capital City in Africa. Because of such games. But there was a game that was anointed. There was a game that was called Where's Wally? Does anybody remember Where's Wally? If you remember Where's Wally, they should call you by something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there was this game called Where's Wally? There was this character called Waldo. Okay? He was this white kid who wore glasses and always wore funny shirts. It was always red and white stripes and glasses, and sometimes he had a hat, right? That was Wally. He was a sleek and slender guy, and they would show you a puzzle of so many people, right? Or a picture of like a sea of people, and they'll say, find Wally. Find Wally. Wally. And you would labor for hours to look through this picture just to look for Wally. You would come up with method. You're like, okay, as if I can put my hand down and when my hand comes to the bottom, I'll go up again and then sometimes you go across and sometimes you go, and you won't see it. And you realize the power of the mind where you're like, I can't see the guy, but someone has told you he's there. Some of you are looking at your situation and somebody is trying to tell you God is there. You can't see him, but I came to let you know he's there. You may not see him. He's there. And something magical happens that when you finally locate Wally, it's like your eyes light up. Your eyes light up. And that picture does not look the same anymore suddenly it doesn't matter how many times you flip the page every time you go back to the page you can still see <laughs> beloved i came to let you know that there are some places god is hiding and he wants you to find him because when you find him you have a reference point in your life when you find god in your finances you will not need to go back anymore you have a reference point when you find god in your family you'll not have to flip any more pages you'll have your reference point when you find god in your business you will not need to flip any more pages you will have a reference point when you find Find God in everything that you do. You don't need to flip around. You will have a reference point. I came to let you know, just because you can't see him doesn't mean he's not there. Just because you're not feeling it doesn't mean he's not working. Just because you're not seeing things doesn't mean that God is not engineering things behind the scenes. I came to let you know, God is in your 2018. Stop looking to 2019. He's in your 2018. But what he says, is keep looking for me go beyond what's normal look harder search deeper go wider I'm still in the picture and when you find him suddenly the picture makes sense some things are not making sense in your life because you have not found God in the situation. The job that you got was supposed to be a miracle job. You prayed for it. It came, but somehow you lost sight of God. And, and it stopped making sense. Beloved, until you find the subject matter of the picture, the picture won't make sense. 
Your relationship minus God won't make sense. Your family minus God won't make sense. Whatever you are doing minus you locating God in that situation won't make sense. We only receive sense when we receive sight of where God is. In faith, sense is where you see God. That's why Peter knew we're in the boat. It's raining. Jesus is on the water. To a man, sense is to remain in the boat. But if Jesus is not in the boat, even what makes sense won't make sense. It will make more sense for you to try and walk on water. Because where he is, is where the sense is. Some of you, that's your deliverance for 2018. Yes, he's tall, dark, and handsome. But there's no God in that equation. So it doesn't... They offered you money for this deal. But you have no peace. So guess what? It doesn't... Where God is, is where the sense is. And, and you see, those guys knew that even though they served God, they Greeks, that as long as they were not around him, it didn't make sense. Thank God for Andrew. Thank God for Philip. But it won't make sense until we meet Jesus. You have to move. Tell your neighbor, move. move. You're not blessing me. Tell him one more time, move. move. You've got to move in your worship. You've got to move in your praise. You've got to move in your desire and your hunger for God. Tell your neighbor one more time, move. move. Uh, you're not blessing me. Tell him one more time, move. move. Beloved, some things won't make sense until you move. God cannot show you some things until you move away from some things. God will not reveal the fullness of who he is in your life until you move away from some things. There's some relationships you need to move away from. There's some desires you need to move away from. There's some plans he didn't give you that you need to move away from. And when you move away from them, you move closer to him. So God has to alter some of our desires so we begin to see more of who he is. Beloved, let me say this. Somewhere along the lines, worship got confused. Somewhere along the lines, worship got altered. Somewhere along the lines, people began to make us seem as if worship is a harmony. I came to let you know, worship is not harmony. Worship is your heart. It's not the melody. It's not the, 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 the semantics. It's not the syncopation. It's not the skill. It's the heart. Because the Bible says, God looks man looks on the outside but god looks where the heart so you could have the skill but minus the heart you could have the plan minus the heart you could have every feature that you require minus the heart problem with the heart is that only god can see the, heart. the problem with the heart is that men are easily deceived by the outside but god cannot be fooled the heart will show okay you know something somebody's heart will always show eventually they can fool you for some time, but eventually you will begin to see their heart. And sometimes God pushes us in a way to reveal what's in our heart so that we can draw closer and closer to him. Somewhere along the lines, worship had become confused. Can I, can I also say this? Is that interestingly enough, when we look in the Garden of Eden, there's no actual mention of the word worship. If we look at God's intention, there's no word called worship there. God simply says, follow my instructions. You can eat this, but you can't eat that. And somewhere in there, we begin to see that that was God's original intention of worship. Our desire to trust him, our desire to believe him, our desire to fellowship with him, our desire to obey him. Obedience is worship. 
I know our generation doesn't like those words, obedience. Obedience, now you're giving me rules. Now you're giving me rules. Let me tell you something. This whole world is created by rules. I don't care how much grace you have. Jump off the roof. Let's see. Let's see if the rules won't apply to you. Let's see. Let's see if grace will keep you. Jump off the roof. Let's see. Even Jesus, full of grace. Didn't the enemy say, throw yourself down? Come on now. But Jesus said, hey, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Beloved, let me tell you something. Worship was originally intended to be the surrender, the yielding, the desire for our heart to be with God and to do what God says. That was the original intention of worship. In fact, the first place of worship where worship is mentioned, can I show you? Genesis 22 and verse 5, where the first time you see the word worship. Genesis 22 and verse 5. Help me, media guys, so we can, we can see here that God's intention of worship comes out of the mouth of Abraham. It says, and Abraham said unto his young men, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Abide all of you here with the thing. <laughs> Who's using this version? And I and the lad will go yonder and what? So God's original intention of worship shows something. Sacrifice. The first place where worship is mentioned is sacrifice. And sacrificing meaning going yonder, going further than is required. That is the first mention of worship, where God is saying that we must look for him and go deeper than his. So I want to let you know this, is worship is founded on priorities and not personality. Can I say that again? Worship is seen in your priorities, not your personality. Some people are emotive, so they easily cry. They easily look like they're deep worshippers, but their decisions are completely wrong. Oh... You don't want to say amen now. You don't want to say amen now. Because worship is not based on your personality. It is exhibited in your priorities. In other words, can you make the decision that draws you closer to God? Jesus says very clearly. He says, uh -uh. He, says he who loves his life will lose it. But he who hates his life will gain it. So you must make a decision every time whether to gratify your own self or go after what God wants you to do. What is the decision making in your life based on? Is it based on what you want? Is it based on your character? Is it based on your personality? Is it based on your shortcomings? Is it based on your family? Is it based on your connections? Or is it based on your relationship with God? Worship is founded in our priorities. In other words, what do we make a priority in our life? What do we make as the ultimate thing that we want to get? Beloved, let me let you know the ultimate thing that you must desire is to please God. The ultimate thing that you and I must desire is to worship God. The ultimate thing that you and I must desire is to serve Him. That's why the Bible says, or David says, One thing have I desired, not many things, but one thing have I desired, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. I came to preach to somebody today if there's one thing that you need is to desire God it's to desire God worship is founded on priorities and not personalities some of us we value so many things so many things and we don't realize that God is trying to deal with our priorities not our personality there are times God has to put options before you, just like he did with, with Abraham, to say, what are you going to choose, your son or me? What are you going to choose, your friends or me? What are you going to choose, a relationship status or me? What are you going to choose, money or me? What are you going to choose, your pride or me? What are you going to choose, your so-called dreams or me? Because, beloved, let me tell you this, God is a jealous His jealousy is not for people. His jealousy is for anything that takes his place. Anything that causes you insecurity outside of, listen to me, anything that causes you insecurity reveals your true security. Anything 
that causes insecurity reveals your true security. If you are insecure without money, if you are insecure without a relationship, <laughs> some people are serial daters, eh? Serial. 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 They don't even breathe from one relationship. Yeah, it's like you want to rebound your way into marriage. Just pop, pop, pop. <laughs> and pity. Cereal. Oh, you guys know what I'm talking. Don't don't act all holy here. We out here saying, you know, I just want to be godly right now. I want to serve God. You know, some of you are just worshiping because you're single. Uh -uh. Some of you are praising God because you're broke. What causes you insecurity? What causes insecurity when you minister? Is it people's reaction or God's reaction? What, what causes insecurity? Whatever reveals your insecurity shows your true security. Who's ever walked through a dangerous place? And you've got your phone and your wallet. I don't care how you are walking. At that moment, both hands go into your pockets. If you have a bag, the bag will be in the front. <laughs> you guys looking holy. What you're communicating is I can't lose this stuff. That's the way we act when God says, give me your phone. <laughs> give me that relationship. <laughs> give me your time. Whatever causes you insecurity reveals your true security and rivals the place of God in your life. I'll die without him. You won't. You won't. You are alive. No money. I'll die. You won't die. You are alive. Did you come here with money? Did you, did you pay to enter the world? Was there a trophy when you entered the world? Were you like 20 kwacha to enter earth? No. You just entered. How are we together? Beloved, sometimes God, as I try to wrap this up, God engineers some storms in our life to deal with our security. Jesus says this, man. He says, hey, I came here for this very hour. Jesus did not let the distraction of their applause or their desire distract him from his, his original mission. Jesus could have fallen in love with everybody looking for him and say, ah, Lord, <laughs> let's suspend this death now. <laughs> Even try, say, let this cup pass. Okay, can't pass. Okay, I'll do it. And, and he shows a profound principle. That sometimes God engineers some storms to reveal your true purpose. Sometimes God engineers some storms around us to reveal the strength of our worship. Proverbs 24 verse 10. I want you to see this. The strength of your worship. Your worship is important. I want you to see the scripture. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. I love this scripture. It says, if you faint on the day of adversity, your strength is small. This is the Bible. If you faint on the day of adversity, your strength is small. So sometimes God has to engineer some storms to strengthen you. <laughs> sometimes God has to engineer some fracas around you to reveal how strong and how powerful you are. Without the crucifixion, Jesus would not have been revealed as the Messiah. 
Without the betrayal, Jesus would never have been revealed as the true Savior. So stop fighting some of these things around you. Some of these storms won't kill you. They're here to strengthen you. Sometimes God has to engineer some storms because you're not paying attention so that you can begin to focus on who he is and what he's doing in your life. I remember this one time I went on a flight and I was going to Solwezi, you know, Mabanga. I went to Mabanga and it was a 30-minute flight. I think it's about 30 or 40 minutes. And I'd been there a couple of times on that flight. And usually every time I'd been there, it's on a sunny day. Now, let me tell you something. Some of these planes in this country, hey, they bring the faith out of you. I don't know about you, but if I haven't prayed that morning, the minute I step on the plane, I become Holy Ghost filled. Father, this propeller plane ain't going to take me down. It ain't over for me yet. I still got places to go. I even begin to prophesy to where I'm going. So, Rezi, I speak to you. I will see you in 45 minutes. I will, I, I'm, I'm dead serious. I just came from Lusaka. I was speaking to Lusaka. I said, Lusaka. Yesterday, I see you. I'll be there. Because some of you just enter by faith. You just enter. Plain. Because it says Lusaka, you just enter. <laughs> because it says Kapiri, you just, you just enter. And, and, and as I got on this plane, I was with a whole bunch of white people, you know. And, and, and I don't know about you, but every time I'm on a plane, you know, and I get comfort. You know, sometimes when I see people who are better than me at handling air, you know, I've got, I've got height issues. I've got, I've got issues being in the air. You know, I'm scared of heights. That's real talk, real talk. Okay? Real talk. Okay? I'm vertically challenged and scared of heights. Okay? It's a fact. Okay? So, when I'm in the air, I pray a lot. Every bump, I intercede. Shantala. <laughs> and the pilot is just like, yeah, this is your pilot speaking. <sighs> There's a bit of turbulence ahead. But don't worry. We'll get you through it. Should be a smooth slide after a few low hanging uh, clouds. And then you, hear, you don't hear what he says. What? <laughs> then I get on the flight and we reach turbulence. Now, one time, if I digress, some of you don't appreciate your pilots. You know what I'm saying? Eh? You, 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 don't, you take it for granted that you're just going to get there. There was a time where I flew to an African country. It was Nigeria, just black people. The turbulence was so bad. This guy said, this country, oh. The guy next to me is like, this country, oh. Even flying in is a problem. You have to fight for everything, even in the air. Just coming in. When the turbulence was boo, 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 everyone was like, hey, Chineke! When we hit the ground, people clapped. Yeah! I said, I've never seen that in my life. You see, some of you don't appreciate God until you go through some storms. Aww. It's only one clap until you go through some songs. Anyway, so I'm on this flight going to Sol Solesi, right? And everything is okay, everything is okay. Until we hit some serious turbulence as we're reaching Solozi. We began our descent and the clouds are black. They are dark. You know those darkness and the lights come on. I'm like, oh, snap. Suddenly you begin to look at the plane. You look at the wings. You're like, is that a crack on the wing? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Why is that propeller not moving at the same speed? And this guy starts talking to me. So where are you going? I'm like, I'm so his man. <laughs> and I'm literally jumping up and down with every bump. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know, because I work. Blah, 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 blah. He's just talking comfortably. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, mm, yeah, man. <laughs> Shakala, bro. Under my tongue. Raka, blaka, sata. What did you say? Raka. No, no, nothing, nothing. nothing. He's talking to me. And he's able to endure the storm because he had more confidence than I did. He had stronger faith than I did 
that we were landing. Some of us have been paralyzed by fear in some storms. You're not even enjoying the flight. You're just looking at everything. We're going to die. We're going to die. That's our father. We're going to die. Because we kept going around in circles. And I could feel the engine being thrust. And I could feel the power of the, of the, of the plane because of the storm. Sometimes God puts you through storms to show you the power of your praise. <laughs> to show you the power of your worship. To show you the power of looking to God. Because Paul and Silas were in a storm. But the Bible says at the midnight hour, they began to praise God. They began to worship God. And the chains fell. The prison gates opened. I came to preach to somebody. In 2018, don't let this year end without praising God the way you should end. Without worshiping God the way you should. Without looking to God the way you should. Don't worry about the storm. Don't worry about the turbulence. Just worship your way through it don't worry about the struggle just praise god through it don't worry about the challenges just praise god through it we kept going around in circles and circles listen listen i need to i need to wrap this up we kept going around in circles and circles and i was wondering what in jesus name is going on because because we kept going in circles, and instead of landing, we even landed about five minutes late. And I'm thinking, what is happening here? And the guys down there were watching. When I landed, the guy who was waiting for me was like, hey, you guys just kept circling and circling, circling and circling. And we were wondering what is going on in that plane. It is only when we landed that the captain said, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we apologize for that delay. But because of the weather, we had to change our approach. My God, you missed that one. We had to change our approach. We had to change our approach. It is only when we changed our approach that we're able to land this thing. Could it be that you are still in that storm because God is looking for you to change your approach? Could it be that you are still in that struggle because God is looking for you to change your approach, change your view, change your perspective, change your ideology, change your theology? Could it be that every relationship is breaking down not because of the people but because of your approach? Could it be that the business is breaking down not because of the ideas but because of the approach? Could it be that even the ministry that you have has not blossomed not because you're not gifted but it is because of the approach you might be asking me pastor what is the approach i'm glad you asked my bible says our approach is very simple i will enter his gates oh my god with thanksgiving and i will enter his courts with praise is somebody who's ready to say my year is not ending until i worship god my season is not over why because i will still worship God. In my storm, I'm entering with thanksgiving. I will enter his courts with praise. I came to let you know that situation won't kill you. That position won't stop you. As long as you worship God, God will move you. As long as you worship God, God will draw you closer to himself. As long as you worship God, God will magnetically move you to the right place. The Bible says, when I am lifted up, when I I exalt him when I lift his name above everything above every situation he will draw me meaning I can't remain in the same position I can't remain stuck I can't end here if I worship God I'm bound to move if I worship God I'm bound to change
change. If I worship God, I'm bound to shift. He said, when I'm exalted, I will draw all men. Meaning I can't remain here. No worshiper can remain in the same position. Child of God, I came to let you know, this year won't end the same place you started. This year won't end in the same position. The key is worship Him. Exalt Him. Magnify His name. Glorify Him. The Bible says, lift His name and He'll draw you. Ah, shut up, Baba. I wish I had a believer in this place who says, even though they say I have cancer, my God is a healer. Even though they say I'm broke, my God is a provider. Even though they say I'm defeated, my God gives me the victory. Somebody say yeah. Taking every thought captive. Every thought, every ideology that exalts itself above the name of Jesus Christ. I came to let you know, if you lift his name up, he will lift you up. If you lift his name up, he will draw you to the next level. If you lift his name up, he will push you to the next level. If God is trying to say, change your approach. Just trust me. Obey me. Do what I say is right. Do what I say is good for you. And you will see the way I will move you. Listen, worshiping God is not about the songs we sing. It's about the surrender of our heart. When God says, bring the little that you have, even though you know it's your last meal, you're confident that this is not going to be the end for me. Even when God says bring your child, you're confident that the God who gave me this child will give me more. Even when God says bring your time, you're the one who says Lord, I've sacrificed my time for you. Now accelerate me where I have given up my time. Listen to me. You cannot worship God and remain the same. You cannot honor God and remain the same because my worship is not a reaction. Listen to me. My worship is not a reaction. What that means is that I don't react, I respond. My worship is not a reaction, it is a response. Meaning whether it is all good, I will bless the name of the Lord. The Bible says I will bless the name of the Lord when? At all. My response all the time is God is good. Whether I have two kwacha, God is good. Whether I have 2,000 kwacha, God is good. Whether I'm employed, God is good. Whether my marriage is going well, God is good. When my marriage is not going well, God is good. When the church doesn't seem to be moving, God is good. When your business doesn't seem to be progressing, God is good. When nobody claps for you when you lead worship, God is good. When nobody claps for you when you do something good for them, God is good. All the time. God is not good sometimes. God is good all the time. When everybody forsakes you, God is good. When they break up with you, God is good. When they, when they speak evil about you, God is good. When they talk about you behind your back, God is good. When your business falls down, God is good. I came to let you know that our response at all times. Stand to your feet. 